All right, so here's the new firmware update for SharkBite. We've added a ton of new features for us pilots. I gotta say, Carl really knocked it out of the park with this one. Uh, he's been listening to pilots like myself and others and implementing a ton of features. Uh, that features that we think we need to better use the system for racing and for replacing analog video. So here's a little pro tip if you're updating a lot of video transmitters and you don't like having to reload the firmware file onto the SD card each time. You can add a text file to the root of the SD card that you're putting into the goggle and type do not remove .txt. And then this file here, this hd0tx.bin, will not be removed after each firmware update. This is a demonstration of pit mode. I'm going to get to the field and power up. And it's okay to power up because my video transmitter is going to start up in uh, 0 0.1 milliwatt mode. It's a very, very low power output mode. I'm going to get my uh, channel and power assigned to me. And I'm going to use stick commands to change the channel. And so make sure my power is at 25. Pit mode's at 0 0.1 milliwatt. Then I'll do uh, save. OK. And now I'm going to change my channel on the VRX. Channel 5, you can just jog it to the right. And then I'm going to arm, which is going to exit the pit mode, and now I'm at full uh, 25 milliwatt power output. Now when you're disarmed, let's say you landed, you can go back into this menu, and you can put pit mode back on, or you could even put it into a zero milliwatt mode. So here's the zero milliwatt mode. So at this point, the VTX is completely powered off. And you can have it set up to do that when the device boots up, too. So I'm going to power cycle. All right, I'm going to turn off the drone. Power back up. And what should happen here is that the video transmitter should be um, on, but not transmitting anything. It's in zero milliwatt mode. And uh, to see any video signal, actually, let's do a scan, just to make sure. Do a scan here. So there's nothing I'm seeing. OK. Uh, I'm going to go live. And now it went from zero milliwatt mode to full power output mode. And you can see how just how fast that turned on. All right, so let's start getting through this list here. Um, we can now go to the record mode, and we can force it into an auto or manual mode. Auto was the default before. Manual is going to make it so that you can force it to record by holding down the top button, uh, the jog wheel button. There's now a record format. Default is a TS format, which is um, chosen because it's more stable when power is removed from the VRX. Uh, but now there's also a MOV file that you can choose. It'll make it a lot easier to edit videos uh, that are recorded by this, because you can then import them directly into your video editor, rather than having to maybe transcode it in something like a, a Handbrake to a, to a .mp4 file. So that is a very big help for a lot of us. should make editing videos a lot easier. So thank you, Carl and team, for putting that in. Uh, there's now also an on-screen display uh, from the video receiver. Uh, so that's going to tell you the uh, recording status and the, uh, sig uh, the uh, antenna signal strength for each of the antennas. So let me show you what that looks like. So I'll do a scan here and get onto the proper channel. OK, so I'll just have it looking at a wall right now. But uh, if you look in the upper right-hand corner, 
we now have a recording status indicator. It's not recording. That's what that gray looks like. And then um, I don't have the antennas mounted actually on, on the SMAs. So I've got full strength on my uh, patch antennas and uh, very little strength on my uh, top SMA antenna points. Uh, so I'm going to hold down the jog wheel and it should start recording. And it did right there. And then I'm going to hold down again and it should stop recording. So that's pretty cool. You also notice there's a new easier to read larger font in this build. So if I increase my throttle, you can see it increasing this value here. The update rate, I would say, is maybe around uh, three, four frames per second. And in prior builds, that had actually been up more around like eight to ten frames per second. Uh, so I'm hoping, uh, I'm told that maybe in the future, this code will get optimized a little bit further and we'll get a, a little bit faster on-screen display update rate. But it's it's uh, it's adequate right now, and it's a huge step up over where we were at at the beginning of the year, if you if you remember that. And uh, yeah, these these characters look pretty good. They're easy to read. Um, liking this a lot. So let's move on. Look at some of the other features. Um, let's see. Manual recording, MOV file format for recording. Uh, there's the uh, option to not record the on-screen display. So if I turn that off, now my recordings from the unit won't have the on-screen display elements recorded on them, which can be really nice for sharing videos with others online and uh, not having the distracting uh, on-screen display elements in the way. So that's a super cool feature that uh, between the recording format as MOV and the option to turn off the uh, OSD for recording, uh, it'll make making videos from your SharkBite DVR recordings uh, a bit more appealing to others to watch. Uh, this is another feature I'm pretty excited about. Uh, when I'm at a racetrack and I have an assigned channel like channel 3, for instance, I want to always stay on that channel when I turn my goggles on. But the current behavior in, in prior releases, it would always auto-scan for the strongest signal on boot up of the video receiver. And now it's going to stay on whatever channel I had on last time I used the receiver, which is great. That's, that's what I need. And I think this was in a prior release, but this is giving you um, a graphical view of, of the relative strength of each of the antennas. And here is whether or not you want to see the on-screen display from the video receiver. So that would be um, the recording status and the antenna bar. So I could, you can see I just turned it off and now there's no longer the on-screen display up here. And if I go back in and I turn it on it should be back on there, and if I hold down, it starts recording. If I hold down again, it should stop recording. So that's how that works. Uh, let's take a look at playback. Okay, see how long this takes to populate here. So that did load up pretty fast for me. Uh, you can see I turned off the on-screen display and now when it plays that back, there's no on-screen display. I also turned it off for this video here. So this was a race I was at over the weekend, and I decided to try out the feature where we can disable the on-screen display and see what that looked like for the recording. Let's see if we can uh, jog ahead here. Uh, here comes the start of the race, it looks like. All right. Uh, oh, this also is with my, uh, not my, but the the new upgraded uh, sharper wider lens for the Runcam Nano HD. Um, another interesting thing here, I don't see stuttering anymore in the playback of the DVR. 
that was not mentioned specifically as a bug that was fixed, but uh, anyone that's used Sharkbite up to this point will remember that the uh, video playback in the DVR would oftentimes freeze up after maybe uh, five seconds of playing back. But <laughs> obviously, oh, oh, no, there it went. Okay, so it looks like it's got a little bit longer of a buffer before it starts to uh, be choppy again. So let's, there's a new on-screen display. It's been rewritten uh, from the ground up and now has support for different kinds of fonts. I don't know if this particular build has the ability to change fonts, but uh, I know that that is coming in the future. Um, but the main thing you'll notice is the font is a little bit bigger, which will be easier to see. Uh, there's a uh, smart audio support for the uh, racing VTX and I've made a video about how that works and that's really cool that that's there so you can control the video transmitter settings uh, through uh, TBS smart audio protocol where the flight controller can send um, commands to the um, video transmitter like what power level to run uh, and what channel to run now uh, there's also an adjustment for 25 milliwatt mode where you can bump the power output up and down in uh, one milliwatt increments to fine tune the power output. Uh, that would be useful for racing. And the ever great bugs fixed. <laughs> so I'll be uh, keeping my eye out for any bugs that I see left over, but uh, the team's been doing a great job of working on the bugs that myself and others have reported and getting them taken care of. Uh, one thing I've noticed is I used to have a very, very fast on-screen display element refresh rate. I think it was around 8 to 10 frames per second, which is very fast for characters changing. And I think now I'd say it looks more like 3 or 4 frames per second. Uh, I'm told that this will be increased again um, with later software updates. Uh, where after it becomes uh, more streamlined and uh, optimized. And uh, yeah, I think I've seen this one also, and it uh, goes away if you exit the uh, VTX menu.